So I'm guessing if you watched last episode, you now think that Blaine and I are klutzes. Well, you know what? Boat injuries are a reality to life living on a boat. Between hitting your head and getting things squished between generator parts and falling, it's just part of life. Hey everyone, and welcome to our crazy life on board Tangaroa. Two years ago, we decided that it was time for our family to move on to a boat. But not just any boat. 1969 aluminum char that needed a lot of work. Of course, being the crazy people we are, we decided we could do the whole refit ourselves. I personally am surprised that we're not divorced yet and that our kids have not disowned us. But soon, Tangaroa will be ready for our trip around the world. We hope our adventures inspire you to live each day with laughter and appreciation. Visit us at onboardtangaroa.com for early access to ad-free videos. What's I have that? to say it's a little bit chilly living on board Tangaroa in the wintertime. Luckily, every one of us has their very own Snuggie. And of course, Maggie loves to cuddle into mine. <laughs> I think you're pretty happy, aren't you? Yeah. And of course, the weather could be a little bit weird around here. One day it's really cold and you're wearing every piece of clothing. The next day it's hot and t shirt and shorts it is. My good friend Marianne and Arnold, our good friends, Blaine and I, are in Duncan for a wedding. So we are taking the boat and we're going to meet them for brunch at Mill Bay. Um, I've known Marianne forever. She was actually my roommate in military college and I'll throw some pictures in here because it's like crazy. But yeah, that's where we're going. We're going for brunch at Mill Bay Marina at Bridgman's Bistro and we've done videos about Bridgman's Bistro before. And we're taking the tender so we don't have to drive to Malahat. However, Blaine's a little bit worried about this tender. The engine's doing some weird stuff. It smokes a little bit. Yeah. When you're on a boat, there's always something breaking. Yeah. Boating is basically driving around while things break and you fix them. It's basically what it is and you spend a lot of money fixing the things. So remember that. If you're going to get into boating, make sure you know how to fix your own stuff. Or at least have a little bit of uh, a skill level because if not, it gets very, very expensive having to hire people. Marianne and Arnold are the type of friends it doesn't matter how long you're apart. When you get back together, it's just like it was yesterday. We just had an amazing brunch at Bridgman's Bistro and we saw Elizabeth, who, if you put the video up there, so we were bouncing. Um, she helped us do our first fill up on the boat. So that was cool. And we um, checked out with Arnold and Marianne, which are good friends of ours. And hopefully they can come on board for a week this summer, this summer coming up. And now Blaine is just checking the Navionics chart to see what Blaine. It's not actually a barbecue though. This is the Venus Boy Profiling System. And what it does is it allows scientists to study marine life and processes in the water column rather than just on the sea floor. It is the first day of fall and this is the harvest moon that we're seeing right now. It's absolutely stunning out here. But of course this was the calm before the storm because then came along the bomb cyclone. We knew storm season was coming though, so we prepared. Um, cyclone weakening as it moved through BC's south coast, but still hitting Vancouver Island and the southern Gulf Islands hard. The historic storm bringing with it rain and winds gusting up to 90 kilometers per hour in some areas. And the 
It is unclear the full scale of damage, but British Columbians did get a reprieve this time as the most destructive part of the weather bomb moves on. It doesn't usually rain this much in Victoria. Right, Izzy? Izzy's like, I don't see rain this much. It's been a bit chilly on the boat, but that's okay. But check it out, it is so loud. And poor Blaine is coming out in it right now. I'm really surprised he's not coming fast. See if you can see him. He's right there. He's over there someplace. Ugh. This is why we need the railings back. And you know, the these things, the canvas, so we can enclose this and it's not dripping right onto, you know, the deck to wait to see how loud it is in, the, in our bedroom. Watch this. Okay, I'm in a bedroom. Well, let me turn on some lights here. Hold on. Listen, it is louder in here than it is out there. It's what happens when we live in a tin can. Need to get some um, insulation up there. Right, Maggie? Can you see him? There he is. It is raining. It's kind of funny, school starts and suddenly it's fall here. It's fun. <laughs> we're going for dinner. It's the out and this is what we're wearing for dinner. We used to match until Blaine had his jacket stolen when it was in his little mini truck. It's kind of a bummer because we matched. I'm the bright one. You're very bright. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh. We were at 52% when we left to go to dinner, and then we woke up and... We were at 7%. What? I... Huh? I don't think we were actually at 53% last night. What happens with lithium and lithium is they have a very small voltage change from full to, to empty, except for at the very ends. So the controllers count, they do what's called Coulomb counting, count how much is going out and how much is going in and they kind of estimate how much power you have and I believe being we've had several days where we haven't been right full I think the reading has been skewed because it hasn't hit certain points that is you know are accurate to update the, the percentage so it just this morning I, I had a feeling last night that it was getting a bit low I checked the voltage before I went to bed last night and uh, when I woke up this morning, nothing was on. So basically my my BMS and my inverters had started to shut themselves, <laughs> shut themselves <laughs> down uh, to prevent over discharge on the lithiums because that's very bad for the lithiums. Um, so now we got the generator up and running here this morning and uh, just charging them back up again. One of the first things we did to get ready for winter was to calibrate our battery state of charge. Cleaning out the flute. And the second thing we did is make sure that our chimney was nice and clean so our heater was working properly. Big enough, it's just the wire folds in when you're trying to push it down. I'd imagine what about it may be made to pull it through, but unfortunately I can't pull it from the other side because it's capped off at the bottom. So I can't, there's no way to get it through, so I have to push it through. You can't put it up through the No, because it, it won't make it past the damper. Uh, up through the damper, can you put it? It won't make it past the damper. I, I can't get the big bit, because the damper doesn't come out, it's welded in. So it won't make it past it. Hmm. Okay. What about putting a stiffer wire down the center of that spring? 
we're using a whole bunch of duct tape on the spring to make it stiff. Could, but I'd prefer to just try to make it work without so much effort. That's all that stuff. Oh, that's all. That's all ash that came out. My blow's are dirty. I'm not saying this boat was dirty before. Oh, it's dinner time. Yep, I'll come down. Okay. So we're uh, sitting out here and we got all the kids living on board with us now, which is fantastic. Um, and we've noticed that there was a bit of a ceiling leak still in Josh's room. We thought most of it was coming in um, kind of through these, uh, these side hatches here up front. Um, this is underneath the, the pilot house in the storage area. Because um, you get water in, in here and I patched up a few of the snap holes up on the top um, up here hoping that that was it. But that didn't really fix it, so um, I came out here today to to have a peek and see if I could figure out where it might be coming from, and uh, kind of doing a little bit of walking around. And I found in this side, if you look up top, ah, there it is, all along that upper edge. And what you're seeing there um, is. Uh, kind of right in the middle of the screen there is the window framing because this boat was built uh, with a lot of aluminum but it, they also used a lot of wood for some of the inside structure um, so what that is is that's the actual window frame that uh, that you're looking at there and um, so what we've got by the looks of it is uh, the window frames are leaking this is kind of what I'm talking about right here there's there's Izzy hiding in there <laughs> this is what I'm talking about here is is all along these these outer wood edges kind of this caulking down in here um, so Janice is gonna come out here probably today I would imagine and um, and reseal all these windows out here hopefully that'll keep the water out of that front locker area um, It doesn't matter what I do with caulking, I always get it all over me. I think I've got it on my eye this time. Like seriously, this stuff is a mess. You get it all over everything. After a hard day of, you know, caulking, it's cider time. Just gotta talk Lane into it. I don't know if he's coming or not, but, but it's really hot. It's like mid-October and look at this weather. Like it's, oh, wolf socks, way too much. The next thing that was on my list to get ready for the winter storms was to make some new mooring lines. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> well, how about how long do you want the mooring lines? We bought some new mooring lines and I'm gonna just do some new splices and get new mooring lines down. So I have a lot of faith in them. These ones are getting a little bit stiff. I was just in the tender and I unhooked one of them. So now we're just hanging on one mooring line right now. Let me show you. So we're hanging just on one mooring line right now. I just unhooked this one and we're gonna take it apart. I'm gonna use the thimble that's in there again and make new mooring lines. That's my goal for this afternoon. Maybe with a cup of tea to go with it. Easy anymore. And for 50 bucks for new mooring lines, 
I can reuse this. I'm not even going to say what this looks like because my mind's in the gutter. But yeah, I can reuse this. And then I can also reuse the thimble. But you see, this was secondhand. It was a bitch to splice. And this new one's going to be a lot easier. So yeah, let's do it. Here it's sizzling. The old rope on it. Thimble is out. Again, you can see how the rope just fits in there. I'm going to reuse that. So I'm talking to Blaine right now because the these are huge. I can feel the winds Look like double ended dildos. Like, seriously? You live and you okay. learn. Look at them. Yeah. Anyway, um, it's called uh, for Shed a four four millimeter. Anyways, whatever. We need these. Well, we got to think about it. And, uh, there's so much stretch and movement in our mooring. I don't think it's necessary. I don't want to put them back on because they're a bitch to get off. Like these things are so tough on here. Want you to that mooring goes down. And they're a pain in the butt when you go to tie up because you can't bring these up through the hawser holes. Hawser holes? Grab it with the boat hook. This part's visible, you can grab that, but your boat hook will only stop there. So yeah. it does make it a bit of a So we're making a decision that we are not going to put them back on, but I will keep them. Splicing, what I do is I land them in different places. So I'll leave this one here, this one I'll put up one, and this one I'll put up two, which leaves a nice tapered end. And I'll show you what that looks like after. And if you roll the splice underneath your feet as you go along, it makes it nice and pretty. There we go. My new. Boring. What do you guys think? Now just to do a quick whip on the other end. Whipping done. Finally got the heat gun working. Even did the little, yeah, rock hard. That is not coming apart. So, 25 foot mooring line spindle or thimble on one end, whipped on the other, ready to go back on the boat. Picked a perfect day for this. That's what I was doing. I thought it was, it's like dead calm. This was actually a perfect time to do this because there is seriously no wind here. We are not moving. So perfect time. Go, so, new mooring lines, all tied off. Yay! Ever down. Um, he was cleaning our tender. This is D diver Mark. He's cleaning the tender. So we just asked him just to check the swivel anyways. So we'll be good for winter. Again, new mooring lines, check the swivel, check the attachments on the mooring ball. Just make sure that we're ready for winter, for the winter storms. We do not want to be dragging anywhere.
thought the shack was scary. We, we agreed. agreed. We're smart. <laughs> We're redoing it. We gotta get all the wire off first. So we, we now have a nice marine grade heavy duty shackle. <laughs> Did not find at Lord Co. But the uh, Lord Co. shackle got us through until we could get a hold of one of these. And that was our last task to get ready for the storm to bring on the bomb cyclone. It's a cold day, so we said let's have some hot chocolate Baileys, but we haven't had our Baileys or Carolyn's in a long time. <laughs> Janet says, here, pour yourself some, some Carolyn's. So I went to pour it in my coffee. Where is it? <coughs> so I basically... <coughs> That's not funny. <coughs> It makes me gag. <coughs> oh, the crap, Lane. <laughs> it's no longer Irish. It's cream. not fun. It's, the, it's Irish sauce. <coughs> okay, there's very few things that make me gag. Sour milk is one of them. Ugh. Uh, I guess we need to drink our Carolyn's faster, but that's okay because we have. Ryan's and this is good stuff. Oh, look at my eyes. <laughs>